Hi, this is Kendra from Pencil and Pigment, and today is Tuesday, which means I'm doing art around the world, and it is the month of April, which means I'm doing the country of Ukraine. And today I wanted to talk about Kosov ceramics, and this decorative style originated in the 18th century in the city of Kosov, which is located in the Carpathian mountain range in southwestern Ukraine. And this location is significant because of all the available local clay in the ground, which is a dark gray color. And, but these pieces are sort of watered with a white clay to get a creamy texture. Now, these ceramics are painted in only three colors primarily, and each color has a meaning. So the yellow represents the sun, the green represents the mountains, and the brown represents the land and earth. Um, on occasion, there are a couple masters that will add a little bit of blue, but that is kind of rare. <laughs> Here we go. There's the right order of these. Now, when the piece is dry, a metal stick scratching technique called scraffito is used to form sort of a contour drawing and then these pieces are fired and painted with metal oxides to produce a green and yellow color. And during that firing process, the green dye spreads, and this is called tears, to create this sort of watercolor effect. And these are a couple images of a couple different tiles. So the designs and most motifs of the Coast of Ceramics express the history, the life, the folklore, the beliefs, the customs, of the people, which include sort of the local flora and fauna. This includes flowers, trees, animals like horses, deer, bears, birds, and they painted people like hunters, soldiers, musicians, and saints. So here are a couple of those tiles. Now there was a huge range of products created in this style that included sort of cooking pots. Look at these, aren't those absolutely gorgeous? Milk pots, mugs, cups, flasks, barrels to hold liquids, cake holders, dishes, and tiles. And I wanna talk about the tiles. So the tiles are very interesting. So they're, they were created and were used to cover stoves. And this is someone's legitimate stove. Can you even believe that? Isn't that amazing? And um, interesting, these tiles were put on strategically. So they're laid from top to bottom according to the importance of the themes. So the first row, the top, is the most important and is considered a talisman. And here you would find pictures of religious themes, um, themes of social and national importance. And then the second row were tiles that were images of things that they needed in their life like for example sheep which was something that provided clothes warmth and food so magicians could or sorry musicians could also be found on tiles in the second row and here is another stove that is covered with these absolutely stunning tiles now um so there isn't a, a official wikipedia page about some of this so some info is kind of incomplete, but at some point a Kosov ceramic school was created based on the influence of this art and on the next gener and to teach the next generation. So this school was founded in Piston near Kosov and a dynasty of three generations of one Kosov making family went there, which is pretty amazing. And I will link articles in the description box if you want to read about some of the famous artists that created this and painted this hand-drawn style on ceramics. But I want to talk a little bit about Trot Ceramics. Now, they are a studio, and I'm just gonna show this picture again because it's so beautiful. But they are a ceramic studio that specializes in coast of ceramics since 1997. And they have a web page and a YouTube channel, and I will link one of their videos um, creating a piece which is so inspiring and like relaxing to watch and they explain on their webpage this is a very slow process that can't be rushed 
and it takes at least one month to make one piece. So nowadays, um, the Department of Art and Ceramics of Kosov College continues to teach the next generation and keep the tradition alive by preserving the traditional methods and the su traditional supplies used, which I think is absolutely phenomenal. Um, in 2016, the traditions of Kosov hand-drawn ceramics were included in the National List of Elements of the Tangible Cultural Heritage of Ukraine. And in December 2019, Kosov painting ceramics were added to the UNESCO list of intang intangible cultural heritage, which I think is just lovely. Now, I want to say once again that if you would like to help artists in the Ukraine right now or buy art where the proceeds go to helping people of the Ukraine, I will link in the description box charities and places where you can do so if you want to help out during their time of need right now. Um, I also kind of want to talk a little bit about some pottery that I made. So I took a pottery class uh, September 2018 through about February 2019 and one of the things I created was this cup and I want to talk about this because of the method I used. So I, this is wheel throwing, this clay is called um, Orion's Stout and it has the speckles in it if you really like speckled ceramics. But what I did with this one is I threw it and then I scratched a um, sort of chrysanthemum and some leaves on it and then it was fired and then it came out and I put this weird metal oxide paint and then dipped it in a glaze and it was fired again. So this is a sort of, it's not the same exact process, but if you want to experiment with glazes and under glazes and different metal oxides, you can still do so in traditional ceramic and pottery studios today. Another thing I made, and this just holds um, my Neo Color twos from Karen Dosh. So I use this to hold art supplies. Um, another thing I created, this is one of our food bowls for one of our cats. And I want to talk about this one because I used, this is a darker uh, clay body. It was called Death Valley. So it's kind of red. And it has lots of grit and rocks in it. But I used what's called porcelain slip, which is they take porcelain and they water it down and you can paint it on. So it looks like there's two different clay bodies in this bowl, even though it's only one, to get sort of a lighter, whiter effect on darker clay. So you can still create some techniques in this studio that sort of mirror this or sort of, you know, take from this idea if you're interested. Now, I didn't know about this ceramic thing at all when I did these. These were just ideas that were around in the studio that I was able to do. But if you're interested in taking a pottery class or wheel throwing, it is a ton of fun. It is a little expensive. Um, if you're doing a no-buy, obviously this is a no-go for this year. But when I took a September class, because it takes, it takes weeks and weeks for the final piece to be done, I was able to create a ton of Christmas presents and therefore make the class pay for itself. So that's just a thought if you're interested, if you want to see some tangible pieces. But I just, this ceramic painting and the style and the process that goes into slowly making this is absolutely beautiful. This one's dated 1877. So I really appreciate artists when they date their work. That helps a ton. And this is, some of the tiles are supposed to be humorous and funny. So this is a gentleman sort of running into another gentleman with his wheelbarrow. So <laughs> like, <laughs> who wouldn't want this on their stove? <laughs> How much fun is that? Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will talk to you tomorrow. Bye.